kid, little big horse, we don't have no problems with you. We don't have no problems with you. This is a horse we caught uh, probably 60 to 90 days ago for his first experience. We're going to see what we can do to give him a little bit of training without getting in problems. We usually isolate a horse into an area where we got control of this horse here. He appears to be fairly comfortable here. We got the, the rope on his head with a little hitch or an Indian bridle or war bridle, so some people call it. And from here on, we'll want to just rub and play with the horse. Most important thing is to isolate the horse and rub him and play with him and give him confidence. You can notice this horse has been out and rough all the time. He's got a few mud burns on his legs down low around the pasterns from the winter time. It's very important to have confidence in the horse. It's very important to do the rubbing. Rubbing is very, very important. We, the problem here is if the horse wants to lead and turn around and respect us, we want to do that with the horse. We want to lead him. If he will come, we want to reward the horse. The best way to reward the horse is to rub him, is to rub him and get him standing up. The more work you can do with the horse, the better it is with the cameraman and people moving around. It's a little distraction to the horse out in the open here. You notice I'm rubbing down his legs to see whether or not the horse gives any trouble here. We want to lift up his leg as soon as you teach the horse to cooperate and do a little bit of work. The horse is, will learn. It teaches him the respect that is necessary. The horse want to set him up here where we can play with his head, play with his ears, rub the horse. You can probably notice that this horse here, you can't see it from that view here. This horse is a three-year-old gelding. We keep control of the horse. The soft hand on the rope is very important. There's areas that are definitely on the tender side. The face and nose is a tender area. When the horse comes, we want to reward the horse. The hard rubbing over the eyes and forehead seems to be very comfortable for a horse to check his mouth to see how old he is. It's a little tender around the face area. When you have the war bridle or the hitch on the horse's head, it's quite important not to suffocate the horse or make him fight for air. If he will lead a step or two, that is very good. You want to reward the horse by doing that. When you have the horse coming your way and leading around, the horse is learning all the time. Again, we'll put the horse here. We'll, we'll let him walk a step. We'll reward the horse. We'll have him come to your hand. When they come to the hand and you can relax, the horse usually relaxes. The horse is a little bit nervous. You'll notice his breathing. His chest area is starting to sweat a little bit. Again, I will go down and pick up the horse's leg here. And when I pick up his leg, if I can get in a new position here, a little bit lower, I have to be careful that I don't get struck. The leg is a little bit tender down here, so that area, you don't want to hurt a horse. If he puts his leg down slowly, that rewards the horse. We want to rub him back here to see that the horse does not kick. By doing that, we should have the horse's head a little bit this way. And if run our hand down this area here, rubbing here, to be sure that the horse is, isn't tender in any particular area. When the rope is around his leg, we will be a little more careful as he is tender there. The horse is watching the rope. And if he watches the rope and is studying things, that is a smarter horse, and you should give him credit for that. Occasionally, when we have the hitch on the head, we work on the opposite side. The horse has to learn from both sides, because if you get in a new area, a horse can be upset by being in a new location so occasionally we want to rub the leg here go down and push put pressure on the horse's back rub the horse all over and when you go to pick up the leg we run our hand down the leg to to make sure that the horse is not spooked by our hand we'll pick up the leg by pushing pressure on the horse and moving him over holding it up we don't expect the horse to do it perfect because it takes balancing to have a horse learn to stand on his legs. If he's standing on the other three legs, it's easier to do this particular job. This horse has a little tendency to want to turn his mouth down and watch you a little more careful here as if he would nip. Some of the male horses are more inclined to do that. We lead him up here. We reward the horse as the horse will. When you go to leading them, 
It's a good idea to never lead the horse, lead the horse straight. If you take him off balance to one side, it's easier to teach him to lead. You can teach him to lead very carefully here by putting pressure on his head, pulling his head to the side, having him walk and follow you, and reward the horse by coming to your hand. This horse is a little touchy around the muzzle. It takes, if a horse is touching any one particular place, you'll have to spend more time with that area getting him used to it. And they will be, the horse's defense, of course, are striking with the front legs biting and kicking. So the danger points of a horse are directly under his front legs. It's best to be off at a 45 degree angle here when you're fooling with these horses. And a kick, we always start by putting pressure and rubbing motions on the horse. When a horse is in this big area, when this big area, it is harder to isolate the animal and get him to stand quiet while you're training him than if he's in a smaller area. When they look onto the great outdoors here, they're more likely to want to go someplace. We have worked with this horse before, and if I'm not mistaken, we spent about 35 minutes working with him before. And he is remembering a great deal of the, the treatment that we gave the horse, and as long as the horse is not kicking here, we want to reward the horse and make him very comfortable. Certain things will spook a horse. A quick movement will spook a horse. That jumping up made the horse move there quickly. We want to come back down here and get down on his leg here again and work with the horse and lift up his legs, play with the horse, rub the horse, see that the horse doesn't give you any problems, stay up close to the horse. If the horse, you have to keep control of the head to keep from getting hurt with a horse. If this horse were in a smaller area, if he were in a smaller area, you would incline to keep the horse still. This horse is leading very good now, and there's a minimum of pressure on the horse. You'll notice that I tend to move when the horse wants to move to give him the benefit of the doubt on the training as far as leading is concerned. We don't like to be rough with the horse, but at all times we want to go in a different direction to keep control of him. If I were working with him alone now, a softer rope would be a little easier to handle the horse, but there's a little loss of time that way. The horse can get used to the hard rope, and the rubbing of the rope is very important The different parts of his body. We often come back to the same routine of lifting up a leg and letting the horse learn that he's quiet. Watching the horse's ears, watching his legs, watching the amount of tremble that the horse is having, is very important as far as, as control of the horse. Most people want to see a horse ridden. Want to see a horse ridden and the eventual thing is to give the horse a riding. And riding a horse in a big open area like this is tougher because there's no place to keep the horse quiet and from running off because he is not bridle trained or broke to stand ground tied or hobble broke as yet. So what we're doing is encouraging the horse to be quiet, put pressure on him, play with the horse, see that he's not gonna give any trouble. We're gonna punish the horse by walking off a little too much. You'll notice he resented a little bit by switching his tail. We're gonna lead the horse around a little bit around this area here. And as long as the horse is trained to lead here, we're doing a good job and occasionally you can stop the horse and reward the horse by coming if he wants to back away from you we will lead him forward stopping and starting horses is very important your voice makes the horse tranquil giving the horse something to do is very important you can see that this horse here is leading with a minimum of effort right now We'll just go ahead with this, John. It'll be all right. We'll teach him to play with this a little bit here. 
If we had the horse in a corner here, we might corner this horse down here. Oh, the picture's going all right from that distance. If we get the horse down here in a corner, we might find a place where he needs to stay. If we can head him into an area here and move him and set him want to stay here, this may be of help for getting on the horse. We we'll have to practice getting up and down. On, have to in on both sides. You have to practice putting pressure on. You have to practice lifting up the legs and setting the horse up. As he's balanced on this other leg now, I'll have to move the horse. So I will move him a step. If I move him, then I can play with the legs, set the horse up, put pressure on his rump. He follows it a little bit. We want to... We'll put the horse back in the corner. Getting in a corner is a dangerous place for the horse, particularly if you're under the legs on him. But we're doing this because we don't have a small enough area to inhibit horse or encourage the horse to be quiet. I will bring him back to the same place. You notice that rope didn't bother him too much at that time. We'll put him here. This horse wants to look around with his mouth. He probably would nip a little bit if he had a chance. So I'm going to punish the horse to make him stay back in this corner. And then I will tend to have the horse relax a little bit. When he relaxes here, we'll put pressure on him again on this area here. I will have to bring him back over here. I will work on this side of the horse again, lifting up his leg, repeating the procedure. Rubbing the horse, continuing to put pressure on the horse. We'll move him here and see if we can find a place that he enjoys standing. As you can notice, this is a, a big horse, probably 15'3", all of 15'3". He's a three-year-old. He hasn't had the work. He's looking for some place to go. We'll play with the horse to get him set up here. Each operation you do is something that you have to try your method on. And each horse is worked individually. And when he stands like that, you want to reward him. This thing here is giving a little bit of trouble. Maybe we could take time out to, to adjust this cord here. So I don't know where that goes, John. I think that goes around. It's quite important that you don't hit the horse with anything sharp or hard. That's one of the disadvantages of saddling a horse up with a cinch and pulling the saddle tight is it'll teach a horse to buck. And if you can ride them bareback the first time you ride them, that is of definite help. I get up on the horse. He's looking at my legs here. I don't want him to do that. I will slide back down. I got the rope around him, and he's standing on the hind rope there with his hind leg, so I don't want to get in trouble with that. Mistakes are the things that have horses get spoiled, is if they do buck somebody off. If you want to, this is out speaker here. The tendency to want to rattle it. Here's my balance on getting. Put the pressure on the horse. 
where he is around. I use the voice of the horse. You don't jump into any one place because there's no question this horse could buck me off. But I want to let the horse know here. And he sees the foot and everything. So we're getting on the horse. And what we want to do is just keep control of the horse. And we want to get up here where the horse knows that there's no problem. And once you get up here and you do this, and you have control of the horse, and you reward the horse, and you relax on the horse, the horse keeps, keeps the deep breath. You're gaining with the horse. Now you shift around to a new position. If the horse wants to turn or run, I'm in a position to slide down here. It's not a matter of getting bucked off. Putting pressure on the neck seems to always be of help. And then you want to start shifting your weight around, and eventually you want him to see your legs and so forth, and you come here. A lot of people, then you can slide back down on the horse. As far as that's concerned, that was a very good start on the horse. Many people think that if you do that, and you want the horse to be re relaxed all the time. Flat pressure is good. I don't like to pet horses. I like to rub them. A lot of people think it's the pressure on the head that is keeping the horse from bucking. It's a matter of a little more sharp control. We would take this off and use something sh softer. We would practice repeating the same. Getting up and down on the horse. We would jump up and down. We jump up and down on the horse again. The horse is interested in it. I don't want him to be to the point where he would want a buck. We play with the horse. We rub the horse. We get up on the horse. And from then on, we start. That was a bad move I made because I reached right up to his pole. If I'd have rubbed up here, the horse had been better. If I slap a new place, then the horse becomes suspicious of a problem. We don't want to let him know that the headgear is completely off of the horse. But once in a while, we can slip the halter off of the horse, slip the halter off the horse, and keep control up on the head end here. We let him know that we have control of the head end up here. If we have control of it up here, then what you're doing is gradually gaining respect of the horse. What we're doing is we want to keep control of the horse. We want the respect of the horse in this position like here. You want to know that you have the rope on his neck. The rope on his neck, we have it around the horse here, this way here. If you took the rope off, if you took the rope off the horse, you could certainly, as long as he knows that you have control of the horse, that is important. So you have it up here. You could take the rope off. The best way to do it is if you don't want it, you can run the rope through here, this area here, although he sees the rest of the rope coming up. And it's very important to relax when there is a problem. So if you could relax, he hears the noise of the rattle of the rope. So when he feels that at various times here, I will merely move the rope around, feel the rope here, get on here, and I have the pressure of the neck rope on the horse. You can't expect to maintain the discipline over too long a period of time, so we transfer the pain from the mane to here. And as far as I'm concerned, you feel the horse shifting. He knows there's nothing on him. And if a horse behaves in a lesson that good in, I would say, probably 25, 30 minutes, this horse had the same lesson 35 minutes between 60 and 90 days ago. It took much more effort at that time to do it than this time here. So if it took less effort that time than this time here, we should be satisfied that the horse has done a good job. Now, that is the first lesson in getting the horse's confidence and, and working with, with the horse. The disadvantage, you should leave the horse always with a good note. You leave the horse with a good note at all times. You have to make it humane. You leave the horse with a good note. And I think that that would be a fair job. Each time you do this operation, it should take that less effort to do the job. You could probably come up here, put your hands on the horse's neck here, let him know that you have hold of the horse, like this, and gain here. And if he, the horse was under control, where I could get him to stand here, we could stand the horse up. We could probably practice jumping up on the horse. Could practice jumping up on the horse again. 
and we could, you could see that the disposition of the animal is getting where the horse is supple, the horse is supple in giving to your training. And if we could set him up here again, put the pressure on the horse, I haven't got control of the horse's head, so we must get up here again. And if you could do that much with a horse in a half an hour, you should assume that that is a humane way to teach a horse and leave him off with a good note. Thank you. The, the thing on horse handling, if a person had to go through the procedure, you'd know what happened is you should isolate the animal, you should isolate the animal, you should catch the horse without a fight, you should approach the animal on a start and stop basis. If you advance and retreat until the horse is relaxed, you put firm pressure on the horse. You go up and you put the hitch on the horse's head. You get the hitch on the horse's head so you have control. You allow him to lead. You use your voice. You balance the horse by setting him up on his legs, by picking up the different legs of the horse. When you pick up the legs of the horse, that relaxes the horse. You jump up and down on the horse. You get on both sides of the horse so he's not scared of anything. You have no sharp objects on you. You probably noticed that I took my belt off. I took the money out of my pockets. I took my knife out that I normally carry with me because any roughness will give the horse some trouble. I run into trouble one time with this horse when the mic hit me in the mouth and that upset my concentration. Then I made one big mistake on the horse. I started to move my hand from his shoulder up and touched on the top of his head, which is a new area. And if you rub and use the same advance and retreat on rubbing the horse's body, if you gain 12 inches by rubbing, you back up eight, you go 12, first thing you know, you rub the horse over his whole body. You should set the animal up. Balancing is very important. And if you jump on their neck, that makes the horse balance himself. And when the horse is balanced and he's relaxed, then you make the next move. You just don't throw your leg over because that'll scare him. So you ease it over and you put pressure over their whole body. Now, as far as the first lesson, and if you can get off and on the horse, that is of help. And if you can get off and on the horse and have nothing on the horse, that gives him extreme confidence. And you can notice that this horse wasn't riled up. This is his second lesson, as far as I know. It's his second lesson, his second riding. And if you could do that with a horse, I would do this. I would lead the horse. After that, I would tie the horse up. I would let him carry a bridle. I would gradually saddle and lead him around without having to cinch him. I think that the people that saddle the horse, cinch him very tight, make him buck and everything. I think you're teaching a horse to do something and scaring him rather than showing him that there's an easy way to do it. I think this is a humane method. I think that the setting the horse up as far as balance is extremely important, and you don't know how long each operation will take you until you put your hands on the horse. But with this program, I think it is very humane. I think a lot of people can do it. And if you learn no more than to gain on the horse, be humane, isolate the horse, balance his legs, and enjoy the horse, that is of help. And the rubbing is of definite help. I don't like to pet horses. You'll find that there's certain areas that they give the horse pain, and there's certain areas that are very sensitive, and I think that the horses love rubbing over their eyes. I think they love playing with, and as far as the mouth is concerned, certain horses will be touchy about the front leg, their ears, their mouth, their hind leg, but once you've got confidence in part of the horse, and you have him adjusted mentally, I think you can train him a great deal, and even the average handler of a horse that is not going to be a horse breaker and so forth, all of these points are extremely important. And if horses are hard to do something with, I think setting them up and balancing their legs, if you are a horse sure, the horse should be set up so he can stand with three legs down and one in the air. If the other legs are not in position, you should move them 
so they're properly balanced before you lift the legs up on the horse and then it makes it comfortable for the horse. And you should never punish a horse for something that he does not know. If it is new, you should allow him quite a bit of leeway. Another thing is, is when the horse is stretched out, he as a rule cannot jump. And you're probably familiar with the hackney ponies, that they stretch them when you, the lady gets in and out of the, 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 the wagon, the buggy, the cart, and that is so the horse cannot jump quickly. And you use the same principle when you're setting the horse up if you want to get on him. If the horse is stretched a little bit or you jump on his neck, the horse is balancing and he's inclined to stand still. I think that that is a, a good primary lesson with the horse and uh, we'll have to carry the next lesson on after this. Thank you.